Today we want to have a closer look at few flow meters in F1. To measure the few flow has become important since the introduction of hybrid drivetrains in F1 in 2014. Like always in F1, it didn't take long and teams found a way to still extract more power, even with few flow meters. Especially Ferrari was under the suspicion to use more few flow than allowed. There are different ways how you can do that. The first one is you simply pump more fuel than you need to a second reservoir behind the fuel flow meter. So the limit is never breached and you can use higher fuel flow to the engine if you need it, on the straights for example. Another way is to somehow bring more flammable material to the combustion chamber if the fuel flow is limited. So you need to find a component which is connected to the engine's intake air and another gas or fluid. Perfect for this is the turbocharger. So you consciously design the seals in the turbo not perfectly, allowing oil to mix with the intake air and hence have a bigger explosion in the combustion chamber. Back in the day, it was strange that some F1 engines had such a high oil consumption. If someone asks, it's just a badly designed engine. Another way is to analyze the fuel flow meter and to understand exactly how it works. F1 teams even had own departments to do that with a couple of engineers. The fuel flow meter at that time worked with a frequency of 2200 Hz constantly, so was checking the fuel flow 2200 times per second. It is rumored that engineers fine-tuned their fuel pumps so they had their peaks between the measuring points. Ferrari supposedly tricked with their fuel flow in 2019 and had to use less fuel flow in 2020, as officials revealed years later. Because of all this, F1 officially looked for a new fuel flow meter supplier. The 26-year-old German F1 fan and student Nils Juncker was reading about it. He immediately called his father, who is running the company Alengra GmbH, which is specialized in volume flow meters for heating systems and coffee machines. Niels tried to persuade his father to develop a fuel flow meter for F1, but his father Raoul said, no, that's too big, we are a small company and cannot do that. But his son Niels didn't give up. In 2019, father and son were discussing very often how Ferrari could have tricked the fuel flow meters. After a few days, father Raoul was convinced, and they started to work on their proposal for an F1 fuel flow meter. Their new sensor works with ultrasonic technology. Two transmitters are positioned in a 45 degree angle to a pipe with constant diameter. So waves of one transmitter are going with the flow, the waves of the other transmitter against the flow. Waves with the flow will arrive earlier, the others later. So there is a time difference, which will be greater the faster the flow is. That can be measured, and because of the constant diameter, the volume flow can be worked out. So you can measure precisely the volume flow without moving or disturbing parts and Alengra's fuel flow meter will do that with between 4000 and 6000 Hz. The frequency will also not be constant, so it's harder for teams to trick. One thing to note here, if you use a different fluid, the measured time difference can be different, so you could mix something into the fuel and the sensor measures less flow velocity and hence less volume flow. But that's just a thought for later. With the same principle, these ultrasonic flow meters can detect different fluids, detect the water glycol mixture, detect air bubbles and temperature. In general, they always measure the fluid's velocity, so the detection only works if the flow velocity is constant. In the end, the FIA liked Alengra's concept and the small German company got the contract and will supply all F1 teams from 2026 with fuel flow meters. In the meantime, Niels Juncker became shareholder and is managing the company together with his father. I hope you liked this little insight into F1 technology and see you at the next video.